All right, so in this video, I'm gonna solve the equation x to the power of three minus eight is equal to zero. So how most people solve this equation is they add eight on both sides. So I get x to the power of three is equal to eight. And then they take the cube root on both sides. So the cube root of x to the power of three is x and the cube root of eight is two. So then they get x equals two, which is a solution to this equation but actually there are more than one solution to this equation. So I'm gonna rewrite my equation here, x to the power of three minus eight equals zero. And now I'm gonna rewrite eight as two to the power of three. So I get x to the power of three minus two to the power of three is equal to zero. And then now I'm gonna use the formula a to the power of three minus b to the power of three is equal to a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. So in this case, this turned into x minus two times x squared plus two x plus four is equal to zero. So now I get two equations. I get x minus two equals zero and x squared plus two x plus four equals zero. So for x minus two equals zero, I get x equals two, which was a solution that we already got. But now see on top of this, we have a whole nother equation with two more solutions because it's a quadratic equation. So to solve this, I'm gonna use the quadratic formula. So I get negative two plus or minus the square root of two squared, which is four minus four times a, which is one times c, which is four, or all over two a, so two times one. And this turns into negative two plus or minus the square root of four minus 16 over two, which is equal to negative two plus or minus negative 12 over two which is equal to negative two plus or minus 12 i over two, which is equal to negative one plus or minus six i. So these are the two more solutions to this equation. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of y minus y to the power of x is equal to 17. So to solve this problem, for my solution. I'm gonna first, let me rewrite uh, the equation right here. Now to start, just by looking at this equation, what can we infer? Well, notice how we have x to the power of y minus something is equal to 17. And 17 is greater than zero, right? Meaning, x to the power of y is greater than y to the power of x. And this also must mean that x is greater than y, and y is greater than 0. So now that we know this, I'm going to rewrite my equation here, x to the power of y minus y to the power of x is equal to 17. And x to the power of y, I can rewrite this as x to the power of y to the power of 2 over 2. Because 2 over 2 is the same thing as 1. And x to the power of y to the power of 1 is the same thing as x to the power of y. Now this, I can rewrite as x to the power of y over 2 to the power of 2. Because if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. So I can switch these up. Now, y to the power of x, I can also change this up as well. So y to the power of x, I can rewrite that as y to the power of x to the power of 2 over 2. And this, I can rewrite as y to the power of x over 2 to the power of 2. Now from here, remember my original equation was x to the power of y minus y to the power of x equals 17. Now I can replace x to the power of y with x to the power of y over 2 to the power of 2 and y to the power of x with y to the power of x over 2 to the power of 2. So now I get x to the power of y over 2 to the power of 2 minus y to the power of x over 2 to the power of 2 
is equal to 17. Now I'm going to let x to the power of y over 2 equal to the variable a and y to the power of x over 2 equal to the variable b. So now if I substitute in a for x to the power of y over 2 and b for y to the power of x over 2, I get a squared minus b squared is equal to 17. Now if I have something in the form x squared minus y squared, this is equal to x plus y times x minus y. So a squared minus b squared, that's going to equal a plus b times a minus b is equal to 17. Now the only factors of 17 are 1 and 17, meaning that one of these two has to be 17 and the other one has to be 1. So just by looking at this, we can tell that a plus b is going to be 17 and a minus b is going to be 1 because a plus b is greater than a minus b, meaning a, I have two equations, a plus b equals 17 and a minus b b is equal to 1. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these two equations together. a plus a is 2a, b minus b is 0, so these two cancel out, and 17 plus 1 is 18. So I get 2 equals 18, and if I divide both sides by 2, I get a is equal to 9. Now I can plug back in a for 9 into my original equation. So let's we could just do either one. I'm going to do a plus b equals 17. If I plug in a for 9, I get 9 plus b equals 17, meaning b is equal to 8. So a equals 9, b equals 8. And we can even check it over here. Let's plug both of these in. a is 9 minus b is 8. And 9 plus 8 does equal 1. So now that we know a is 9 and b equals 8, we can go back here and notice how we let x to the power of y over 2 equal a and y to the power of x over 2 equal b, meaning x to the power of y over 2 is equal to 9 and y to the power of x over 2 is equal to 8. So, to solve this, let's first start by solving the first equation. So x to the power of y over 2 equals 9. I can first start by taking the power of 2 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get x to the power of y is equal to 81. Now 81, I can rewrite that as 3 to the power of 4. Now I'm going to do the same thing to y to the power of x over 2. I'm going to take the power of 2 on both sides, and then these two cancel out, so I get y to the power of x is equal to 64. Now 64, I can rewrite that as 4 to the power of 3. So I have x to the power of y equals 3 to the power of 4, and y to the power of x equals 4 to the power of 3. Well, what does that mean? Well, y, 4, x, 3, and over here, y, 4, x, 3, meaning x is equal to 3, and y is equal to 4. So this is my solution to this equation. Alright, so in this video, I'm solving the equation x to the power of 3 is equal to 3 to the power of 3. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by subtracting 3 to the power of 3 on both sides. So now I get x to the power of 3 minus 3 to the power of 3 is equal to 0. Now from here, if I have something in the form a to the power of 3 minus b to the power of 3, this is equal to a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. So this turns into x minus 3 times x squared plus 3x plus 9 is equal to 0. So now from here I get two equations. I get x minus 3 equals 0 and x squared plus 3x plus 9 is equal to 0. 
So obviously for x minus 3 equals 0, x is equal to 3. So this is one solution. And now for x squared plus 3x plus 9 equals 0, I can use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this turns into negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared, which is 9, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 9, all over 2a, so 2 times 1. And this turns into negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 36 over 2, which is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 27 over 2, which is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 27 times the square root of negative 1 over 2. Now, 27 is the same thing as 9 times 3. And the square root of 9 is 3, so I get x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus 3 root 3. And the square root of negative 1 is actually equal to the imagined number i. So these are two more solutions to this equation.